Okay, so good morning. This is the Arts Audiovisual Technology and Communications panel. That is quite a, a group, quite a cluster. So our description of that are pathways that require creativity and include jobs in visual arts, performing arts, journalism and broadcasting, audio and video technology, print technology, and telecommunications. So we have five awesome panelists with us today. I have their names and titles on the screen if you're interested um, in remembering who they are and where they work. I'm gonna give a brief intro on the panelists and um, then we'll start interviewing them. I really encourage you um, throughout this panel if you have any questions to chat them in. Um, depending how things go, if you wanna use the raise your hand feature, um, then maybe we can get to some unmuting if time allows and you can ask your question. Um, you also have reactions. If you wanna clap or throw some confetti, that sounds great too. Um, but please do chat in. We definitely wanna hear from you guys um, today. And thanks for being here bright and early at 8 a.m. Um, so I'm gonna introduce our panelists in alphabetical order. <laughs> we have Brian Marshall. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Brian is the artistic director of the Carol Crane Youth Theater. Brian's a native of Sandusky, Ohio, and holds a degree in musical theater from Baldwin Wallace College Conservatory of Music and a master in arts administration from the University of Akron. Brian is the co-founder and managing director of Cleveland's Mercury Summer Stock and serves as associate artistic director of Virginia Musical Theater in Virginia Beach. Brian has directed over 50 plays and musicals. Hopefully that's not too out of date, Brian. Nope, I, I wanna know who wrote that. I enjoy that, <laughs> that's good. Um, and then we have Chris Parthmore who just stood up. <laughs> you can see his dining room there. Chris is the executive director of the Sandusky State Theater. He's a graduate of Perkins and BGSU with a degree in sport management. He's currently working on his MBA at Bowling Green and lives in Sandusky with his wife and daughter. In his spare time, he's a scuba instructor and enjoys international travel. We have Diane Church from New Direction Design and Marketing. She's the owner and lead designer for the business. The company provides custom embroidery and printing services. They embroider and print on various types of apparel, bags, hats, etc. They also print large signage, banners, and other marketing materials. Joey Castle is on the line. He is the owner of New Departure Films. New Departure Films is a video production company that creates video content to help tell the stories of others. And then finally, Matt Westerhold. Matt's the executive editor for five Ogden newspapers in Ohio. Westerhold, who has been the managing editor at the Sandusky Register for the last 14 or more years, oversees <laughs> editorial content and development working with the editors at the Faustoria Review Times, the Tiffin Advertiser Tribune, Tribune, the Finley Courier, and the Norwalk Reflector, in addition to retaining his duties at the Register. Um, Westerhold has a bachelor's from Ohio University and a long career in journalism. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to sum it all up. Um, so many different paths here, many different kinds of organizations represented. Um, so I'm going to start with Diane and just ask you, Diane, to tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, and what you do. And like I said, students, please feel free to chat in your questions. So Diane, take it away. Hey, thank you. Um, let me start out by telling you a little bit about who I am. My name is Diane Church. I am the owner of New Direction Design, and we are located in Norwalk. I, I started um, my business about six years ago. Um, and prior to that, I had worked in different um, positions in marketing and sales and customer service. Uh, my degree is in graphics and visual communications. And I am wanted to get back into, I've, I've had so many different types of jobs, but really the the creative aspect of of the industry is what I love and wanted to be in. So um, we do you, Sarah, do you want me to continue on and and yeah, tell more sure, about sure. the company? OK, so um, if you want to go to the next one. Oh, so my 
first of all, I can see that all of my stuff did not come through the same way as I had it. So, um, so unfortunately, but anyways, um, we, our company offers a couple different things. So there's probably three different main categories and I apologize that it, those, the presentation isn't the same way as with the graphics, but. Painful um, for a designer. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, we, we do, one of the core things is printing services and, um, and embroidery services and promotional items. So if you want to go to the next one, hopefully some of the pictures are on there. Um, so as far as printing, we do all kinds of different printing. Um, probably the most uh, familiar one is with an apparel. Uh, we do different types of printing, even with apparel and direct to garment DTG is probably one of the newest types of printing um, that's new to the industry within the last 10 years or so. And it's very, um, it's something that's very popular because you can take a photograph and have it printed right onto a shirt. And if you'll see the one example there of the cat picture, that was what, what that is. Um, we had a customer that came in and their beloved um, pet had passed away and wanted that printed on a shirt for um, their family member. So it turned out beautiful. It was just a photograph that they had taken off of their phone and we were able to enlarge it and the customer was thrilled with it. So it was a, a Christmas present for them. So um, all different kinds of things, but that's kind of an industry that, uh, or uh, a printing process that people love because they can make it so personalized. So um, we also do traditional screen printing, um, which is what most of your, you guys would have, you know, a shirt that has something that's screen printed, whether it's your um, senior shirts, like the example down below, or, you know, uh, the championship shirts that you got for your basketball team, things like that. So, um, we also do vinyl transfers where we have the equipment in, in house that we can cut uh, vinyl to, um, to put applications onto shirts as well. Um, we also have the equipment for large format printing where we can make signage, uh, banners, vehicle graphics and things. Um, embroidery is also another aspect of our business where uh, we do things onto apparel, um, letterman jackets, which I'm sure all of you guys probably uh, have seen, have or have seen the letterman jackets that um, are in all the schools. So we do all of that type of embroidery and stitching on those, um, all different types of things. Uh, you name it, we probably have embroidered on it, uh, as you'll see in the, the little example, like the ties and bags and um, we in Brighter and small things like suspenders up to big horse blankets. So it's kind of such a large range of things that we can do. And that's what kind of makes it fun because it can be a challenge. Um, I can do the next slide. And then also um, the promotional part of it. We like to be able to offer our customers uh, a place to come where we can help them with the printing and embroidery, but then also find uh, other ways to help them promote their businesses. So we do engraving and um, other signage and things. And then um, we provide to all different types of uh, people and places. Uh, schools, as I mentioned, we do a lot of uniforms, um, different apparel for the different teams or coaches. We do things with lots of businesses, uh, anywhere, any type of business, whether it's a restaurant, construction company, um, government offices, and you know, the couple examples up there, the US Border Patrol, we, we do things for um, the different police stations, fire stations, and then also in just individuals. We have a, um, a showroom here at our facility as well, where we uh, have garments that are here to, to purchase ready-made. And, um, but we have a lot of people that will come in for that, but then also bring their own individual items in that they wanna have um, embroidered or printed or whatever. So um, I think one of the funnest things that I like about this business is that we can be creative in how we're trying to help our customers, um, they come in and want something made up. We're able to work with them, find a way to make it 
make their vision, you know, come to life, whether it's printing embroidery or, or whatever we're doing. So it, it, it's fun to be interacting with the customers, helping them to create what they want in the end. Um, and there's all different challenges. Like I say, sometimes trying to figure out how we're going to get this design onto this large horse blanket or whatever that they brought in um, or these, you know, tiny little socks that they brought in and, and, and things like that. So it's kind of fun. It's just different. Um, there's really so many ways that in, in our industry and I'm sure the other industries that we'll be talking that there's so many ways you can um, uh, showcase and, and have your showcase your creativity. So um, and then as far as, you know, my, maybe some points, if you're looking to get into this industry, obviously each aspect, there's certain um, skills that you, you'll need with us. The, the graphic software skills um, are certainly something that is needed in our, in our facility. Um, so any type of further education you can you can get um, also just the hands on experience if you're if you're willing to intern at places or get a summer job or whatever get into it to the different ones to start learning. Um, networking is always wonderful, whether you um, are have a job already or or you know, trying to establish those jobs. There's so many people that you can um, go to for the advice and, and the experience. Um, and then I guess a couple other things like wanted to note, even as when I look for employees, um, I'm looking for someone obviously that's enthusiastic and loves to be creative. So, um, you know, having some responsibility, accountability uh, is, crucial in in any kind of industry but it's something that i always look for um also just uh paying attention to detail uh that's very important in our our industry and um something that i'm i'm much a stickler on so um i guess kind of summing it up you know, obviously there's so many ways to be creative. I like to say color outside the lines or think outside the box. There, in, in the world today, there's so many ways you can be creative and and um, and showcase that, whether you're doing something at Etsy or the internet, you know, just filled with ideas. And um, so there's there's all kinds of ways, I guess, in, in, in our ways, in my industry or my business, um, it's, you know, definitely a visual thing where you're showing off what you've created. Um, so anyways, I don't know. Thank you for uh, listening. And I guess let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Diane. I, it's a really cool path that you took to, you know, finally get to what you really wanted to do, which was start your own business and be able yeah. to do things that you've done in previous jobs. So um, that's great. Another um, business owner that we have on the line is Joey Castle from New Departure Films. So I think a lot of creativity is required in his job. So um, Joey, can you go next and just tell us a little bit about what you do and, and how you got there? Yeah, my name is Joey Castle. I have a degree in communications from Cleveland State. I'm a Sandusky native. Uh, and I, every project I work on is different, but overall I work on narrative driven videos. Oh that uh, that help tell the story of the people and the organizations I work for. The goal is always to help clients move the needle with their audience, and each project should have some substance and meaning. Uh, and from moment to moment, the job changes depending on the project. One moment I might be interviewing people about their life and career, or writing a short script, or working with voiceover artists, editing, lighting, working on sound design and producing. Uh, mainly, I'm just always trying to make each project interesting and something that feels like it has a soul. Uh, the types of people I work with, I mainly work with on my own, uh, but my clients are nonprofits, large organizations like hospitals and cities and small businesses. Um, and sometimes just normal people with interesting stories to tell. Um, so I'm always working really hard to meet the needs of my clients and I try to give them what they ask for while still maintaining a certain level of authenticity. Um, I think I build a business and a career that's pretty unconventional uh, because that's what fits me best. And um, I wanted to do something with my life that felt inspired. So uh, it all start, kind of started, I started writing screenplays maybe 20 years ago and I wanted to make movies. 
Um, and then I started making wedding videos uh, just to kind of get by during that whole period of time. Uh, and eventually I took a camera around town and I just uh, went door to door asking people if they would let me uh, tell their story. And basically, uh, you know, each little video I made during that time led to the next video. Um, and I was like a production assistant on a Denzel Washington movie in Cleveland. And I worked for a few days in a corporate video uh, project for a Cleveland company. Um, but then, you know, after that, I just started making stuff and uh, I made a feature film a few years ago and that was kind of a failure, but I learned a lot from it. I learned how to recover um, on creative projects and how to overcome adversity. Uh, and I, I think I've really taken a lot of lessons from that movie on every video that I make. Um, and my advice to anybody that wants to get in the creative field is, I would say shadow someone and learn from them and, uh, but then from that point, you know, kind of forget that and just do your own thing and make a bunch of stuff. Um, make as many things as possible. Uh, and also learn how to tell stories because I feel like storytelling is a fading art form. Uh, I think it's really valuable. I don't care if it's graphics or if you're doing branding work, um, but like with TikTok and things, the game has changed and I feel like it's a little gimmicky where, uh, where I like to focus on story and I think story is compelling and I think it's meaningful. And I think it can move the needle. Um, so I would, yeah, I would investigate like how to tell stories and just uh, the nature of storytelling and focus on your voice. And, uh, you know, no matter who you work for, if you work for yourself, to me, the most valuable thing is your vision and your voice. Um, and, uh, sorry. Um, and I would chase that, I would chase that, that, you know, searching for your vision, searching for your voice, you know, searching for who you are creatively. Um, Cause I think like, as far as I'm concerned, this whole thing has been a kind of a crazy journey and uh, it's always been inter interesting and each day is new, each day is fresh. Uh, and um, I would say, yeah, it's worked for me and just go big and, you know, chase that, uh, uh, chase that to me, chase that uh, creativity, and that individualism and um, go big, you know, that's what I would say. I don't know if any of that made sense, but hopefully. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, every day certainly is different in every job, but definitely when you have your own business and, and big, you know, big dreams, creative dreams like you. So um, we actually had a really interesting question chatted in from uh, Kristen, I think it was. Um, did you know you would be in this career when you were in high school or college? And I'll have everyone answer that. But Joey, what about you? Did you know you you would be in this career? No, it's funny. I think I wanted to be an actor when I was in high school. And that would have been a terrible choice. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it wasn't until um, probably college. And I made a commercial in a, in a class. And uh, I was like, oh, I kind of like this. And I was always in the movies. And from there, uh, I think things just built. Um, okay, we have another question just while I'm on you from Sid. Being someone who's interested in the film industry, particularly VO and VO directing, tips for getting over that fear of getting a real job? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I think things are different now. I think that the, I think that people value art. I think it's in everything. Um, it's in social media. It's in uh, every company wants storytellers and they want marketing and they want people that can put them on display. And I feel like uh, when I first got into it, um, it felt like there was a lot of resistance and a lot of people in my life, um, I think, um, hoped that I would choose maybe something a little more practical. Uh, but I just, I went against that at every turn and, um, and just kept at it, even when things looked pretty dire. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you believe in yourself and you believe in it, um, you're going to have stumbles and you're going to fail. Fail. I think that's part of this industry is failing. Um, but don't let that stop you. If you believe in yourself, just go for it. Thank you. Um, one more question from me. You mentioned, you know, big advice would be to shadow. Just get out there and shadow. Any practical advice on how to do that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I had uh, somebody that reached out to me a few, like two years ago, and they uh, just, um, he was an intern at Sandusky City Schools, and he wanted to intern with me, and he did that, and, uh, you know, within a, two years, he has his own company, and he's pretty much doing the same thing that I do, um, so I would find somebody's work that you admire, and then uh, reach out to them. 
great. Matt's, Matt's got some advice on that too. So I'll go to him next, but. Um, well, my, my best advice to young people thinking about their careers is to listen to Joey. Uh, what he says is follow your heart, you know, try things, don't be afraid, uh, don't, don't be afraid to be criticized. People are gonna tell you you're wrong, but if you're listening to your heart, you're on the right track. But in my business, um, you know, all you need is a, um, is, uh, you know, there's three things you need in my business. You, and Joey mentioned this too, be a storyteller. So, so you have an endless level of curiosity you know, you need to know, you need to know, you need to know. And then the second thing is that you have an endless need to tell. You know, you need to tell, you need to tell, you need to tell. And then you only have to be an okay writer uh, because you're going to have an editor. If you're a great writer, you're going to become an editor. Um, but it is all about storytelling, um, telling the story of your community. And that's what Joey does. And that's what we do at the register. So I think you're probably, a lot of you are familiar with the newspaper and what we do, but there are a lot of, besides being a journalist, there's some, some IT uh, work uh, creating the systems um, that are outside the newsroom and there's design work creating web pages. Um, but the best part of a newspaper is the newsroom. So, and I would invite any of you that, any of you who are interested in possibly knowing more to just stop by the register, give me a call, the number's in the paper every day, just give me a call and say you wanna talk about a possible uh, career in journalism or you'd like to shadow a reporter or uh, an editor, uh, or you know, we have summer internships, uh, they don't pay well, uh, if, if, you know, but uh, the experience is if you wanna be a journalist, you can't, you, you should pay us for the experience of a summer internship. Absolutely. So people have been asking about like training and experience. So like schooling versus experience. So can you talk a little bit about what your path has been, Matt, to get to, you know, the high level position that you're in? Well, I didn't even become a journalist till I was 35. And, um, you know, it was almost accidental. But, uh, you know, I, I, had, I had been a, a freelancer, uh, a freelancer for the, the morning journal in Lorraine. And I collected the police blotter in Erie County. And I would send that to them once a week and it got published on Saturdays. And they paid me like maybe a couple hundred dollars. One day I couldn't transfer it. Um, and that was when we used the telephone and it, was, it wasn't like it is today. So I had to go to the newsroom to type it in. And I was afraid that they would notice that I type with four fingers <laughs> and they wouldn't like me. Uh, but I sat there typing with my four fingers and I watched this newsroom explode like a tornado from about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. where these news stories were developing and the, the, the news editor was barking orders. And, and I sat there and I said, you know, if I die right now, I want to die in a newsroom working on a story. So that's what I mean by keep looking for your right livelihood. Keep, keep, keep uh, feeling what's in your heart. That's my advice. And to listen to Joey. <laughs> that was great, Matt. Thanks. Thank you. Um, well, let's go over to Chris from the State Theater, and if you can give us some background about what you do, and also answer the question, did you think or know you'd be doing this when you were in high school? Oh, gosh, I, I definitely didn't think I'd be doing this when I was in high school. Um, before I get started, I, I want to um, just agree with Matt and Joey on storytelling. I, I think that's so important, whether you're in marketing or whatever you do and and you know joey mentioned that's kind of a lost art and i really think that it it is and uh we have a great story to tell here in sandusky and matt and joey and everybody's doing a good job of telling that so um my path was a bit unconventional uh when i went to college all i cared about was athletics i you know i, I went to college to compete um I ended up with a degree in sport management from Bowling Green with minors in marketing and interpersonal communications. 
And I ended up my first job out of college was I was a sales manager in charge of a statewide team with rev annual revenues of $1.3 billion. Um, that was in Tennessee. Um, didn't know I'd be doing that. I fell into that. And, um, and in 2010, my wife and I decided to move back to Sandusky and I ended up in healthcare here. Um, didn't think I'd be doing that either. Um, so I, I worked in healthcare for seven or eight years and uh, was on the board at the state theater. And when there was an opening for the director, um, other board members started coming and asking me if I'd be interested. And I, you know, I said, no, 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 it's not something I ever thought I'd do. Um, but it was my responsibility to kind of manage the business in the interim while there was no executive director. And I was laying in bed one night and I kind of felt my, I, I noticed that my mind was sort of shifting to what do I need to do at the theater? Not what do I need to do at my job? And I said, oh, maybe I should have this discussion. And uh, long story short, I ended up getting hired at the state theater. You know, I, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. It, it's just um, been a kind of a crazy career path. And, and I, it's more so that I get recruited than I go and seek things out. But I, I couldn't be happier that I ended up in the arts. Um, you know, it's I don't think it's any secret that arts nonprofits tend to struggle financially, but we've been very lucky to have a supportive community in Sandusky and the theater was doing really well. Um, you know, right now I'm not so much the director of the theater as much as I'm a construction manager. Um, another hat I never thought I would have, but um, you know, my, my main advice and, and my time at Bowling Green, they really put this in your head and, and I found it to be true. Um, you know, just, just go talk to the people that you, that you, if you know that there's something you want to do, find people that are successful in that industry and bother them until they give you access to them and, and sit down with you. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of calls from people that want to reach out and, you know, just pick my brain for a while. And, and, you know, at first I'm like, I don't have time for this, but maybe we'll see. And, and then when they follow up, I say, okay, there's, there's follow up here. Let's get them some time on the calendar. And, you know, it, as long as you're persistent and clearly willing to work hard and network, you're, you're going to be in good shape. Um, you know, there's, there's always, there's always a place for people that are willing to work hard and, and try and move things forward. Yeah. I two themes, you know, one between um, not where you expected to be in many twists and turns on your career path, and a second one, doing many jobs you never expected to do using skills that you, you, you didn't think, you know, being a construction manager. And um, similarly with Matt, you know, jumping into the newsroom. And um, so it just really speaks to, you know, the lifelong learning that, that we all do in this process. Yeah, that's incredibly important. It's it's funny. The um, th this is the first job I've had where I really, really use my my actual degree. Um, it, it, there's there's starting to be a lot of sport management majors working in the arts because um, you know sport management is like ninety percent a business degree, but then they tweak it to um, the specialties of sports. Like you know when you're when you're selling Coca Cola or other commodities you know, you're looking at numbers, but when you're selling the Cleveland Browns or the Ohio State Buckeyes or whomever, there's that emotional connection. It's different than just transactional. And and looking at it from that perspective is what that taught you. And, and the arts are the same. It, you know, there's the emotional connection to the theater or the sculpture or the painting or the, or the, the music or, or whatever the medium of the art is. And, um, using using that to positively affect the business has gone a long way for us. Very cool. Well, I'm going to jump to Brian now from Carol Crane Youth Theater at BGSU Firelands. I have a little video from him, but do you want to say anything first, Brian? Real quick, um, I, un unlike the two guys before me, the two gents before me, I always knew I wanted to be in the performing arts as an actor or director, but 
I never told anyone because I was terrified that my parents and everybody around me would say, you need a safety net. You need a, you know, you need that backup job. But my dad, who um, was the principal at Furry Elementary forever and ever and ever in Perkins, he sat down one morning before school and he said, hey, I know you have a secret and you want to be an actor. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, the only advice I can ever give you is that do what makes you happy because we can all find work. We'll all find a job. Um, we'll all, all find ways to make money, but you have to find something that makes you happy. At the end of the day, that's all that matters is that you want to wake up the next morning doing what you're still doing and being happy. And throughout my career as an actor, transitioning into a director, transitioning into an artistic director, I've always had that, that wake up in the morning and go, all right, this is what I'm meant to do. And this is what, what I love doing. And right now my passion is not so much me being on stage, but to train the next generation of actors and directors. And I have this great little theater group out at Bowling Green State University's Firelands College. And we, we've been working, I mean, this has been a crazy year for everybody, but, um, We've been kind of doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. We haven't been able to do any, you know, public shows and, but we're still training. So if Sarah, if you can pull this, this is what we've been working on. We're, we, we transitioned this year instead of doing um, public performances to, there's a series of music theater competitions around the country. And so uh, we have like a 10 second clip of what the kids are working on right now out at CCYT. Yes, one moment. I will stop talking because there's only you might see the picture of me and my husband for one second and I apologize for that <laughs> oh, okay. great picture just want to be sure I've got the sound your sound okay here we go Five, six, seven, eight. All you people, can't you see, can't you see how your love's affecting our reality? Every time we're down, you can make it right, and that makes you larger than... Sorry, that's it. <laughs> it was a teaser for the cast because they were like, we want to see you, you can't... Part of these competitions is you can't show the cast what they look like until they actually see it live in the competition. So in real life, we would be going to LA next weekend for this music theater competition of America with this group. But in pandemic life, we're going to Notre Dame College in South Euclid, Ohio to watch it and attend it virtually. So. Um, that's, I don't really have anything else other than just love what you do. And if you are an artist and you know that's what you need to be, then you will find a way to make that your career and your lifelong passion. And that's, that's all I've got for you. Wonderful. I'm so amped up from the video. I'm having a hard time monitoring the, uh, the chat, but we do have a lot of questions because we only have a few minutes left. Um, but one, I think, is specifically for Brian. First of all, they say that sounded really good. And was that Bryce Nevison? <laughs> yes, it was Bryce Nevison. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so every a lot of people are interested in like the after graduation, you know, the anxiety behind figuring it all out, and they have dreams. So any advice about you know go right to school or move somewhere like LA or get experience that kind of thing? And and I'd open that to anyone. Mm. Ooh. So that's a loaded question, but um, whoa, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Go to school. <laughs> you know, be on a path. Be on a path, um, and be ready to you know go a different direction. Um, you know, you, you know, make your choices, but be ready to be open to the possibility. Just like Joey said, you know, he started as a film director wanted to be an actor. Although, Joey, I think you look like George Clooney. I mean, come on. Give me a break, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, be on a path and be willing to switch it up. Uh, I'd say is the way to get started. 
Yes, absolutely. And Destiny asked advice for someone who's interested in acting but nervous in front of big crowds. And um, Chris has a great answer. Start speaking in front of crowds. It gets easy enough and you, if you do it. And that's, you know, good advice overall is practice. It is good advice. Practice. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I still hate doing it, but I have no problem doing it. It's, you know, I, I, I like to be behind the scenes, not in front of the stage. But when I have to get up and speak in front of 1,500 people on a stage, it's, it's not a big deal, it, but um, you know, it used to be, um, but the more you do it, the, the less of a thing it becomes. Yeah. Or be a film actor, and then you only have to be <laughs> of a little crowd. <laughs> but always face your fear, always face your fear, dive yeah. into it, dive into it, whatever it is, because then you get past it, always face your fear. Great. Well, any other closing advice from our panelists this morning? Anybody who's even remotely interested in journalism, please uh, call me and we can talk. Um, and you know, you can shadow, you can you can intern if you if you want. Uh, so please, I'm I'm in downtown Sandusky. Uh, so please call. Great. Yeah, anybody with follow up, I'd be I'd be happy to answer anything. And um, following up on the the one question about should you should you move somewhere, I you know, I, I think it's good to live other places at some point. I found my way back to Sandusky, but I took a decade off living elsewhere. And I, I think there's a lot of perspective to be gained from living elsewhere. Um, but you know, as you're graduating high school and you're still really young, that's a great opportunity to travel to to um, get other places. It, it's a little more difficult as you get older and, and start to plant roots somewhere. So take advantage while you're young. Yeah, I completely agree with that for sure. That's a good good advice. But if you want to stick around, stick around. Uh, but I, I do agree too. I, I left for 14 years and before I came back. And uh, but this is Firelands Forward. So if you want to stick around, stick around. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something from every experience, though. I think that's that's the main takeaway. Whether it's a job you started in that you didn't end in, or a place that you move, I think you learn something from every experience that you can apply to your career. So. Well, thank you so much big time to our five panelists um, getting chats that, you know, uh, this reignited some hope, um, gave them some new perspective. Um, so really, thank you guys very much for your time. Um, like I said, the students are going to be at this for the rest of the morning. So we know that you guys are busy and need to back to work. Um, students, go ahead after this room. We're going to sign off straight from here. Get a drink of water, take a breath, and then click on your nine o'clock link and we'll see you all back in the main room. So thank you so much, everyone. I really enjoyed having you all. All right. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank Good you.